All right, welcome to the data priority pyramid video where I'm gonna break down with you guys the different tiers to data. Um, this is gonna be something that maybe you've never thought about before. Maybe you've heard about it inside the REI SIF community. Uh, maybe you're brand new to REI SIF community, and that's totally okay. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna break down the three different tiers of data and what, are the, what defines each tier, as well as what is the different strategies that we would utilize in order to market to each tier. And then I'm gonna just generalistically kind of write down like some, some different marketing flows and stuff like that to try to help kind of drive the point home. Um, this will be a little bit longer of a video. I, I can't tell you how long, maybe, uh, maybe we'll be able to trim it down to 15 minutes or so. Uh, but at the end of the day, what, what, what the end of objective is here is for, for you to be able to pull a list of records um, and understand that you don't need to just send that whole list right away for skip tracing. We need to do, uh, segment out that list and then take some of that data, skip trace it right away, throw it in X marketing strategy, and then take the rest of that data, depending on our budget, um, skip trace that data, and then throw it into this other strategy and what's happening between two of those actually build a, um, a holistic uh, marketing strategy so that we can convert more of those prospects that we do have, more of those 10,000, to leads because what happens is is people pull 10,000 records um, and they might only reach you know two to five percent of those 10,000 and then they buy more data and they're like oh well that list is exhausted or it's 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 dead you know I'm like well is the house is still there do the are the property still did they just disappear did they you know click their you know uh, ankles together or their heels together and they just poofed away like that's not how it works right you just suck at marketing right so we want to make you not suck at marketing here. Um, and understand and then choose a simple process initially and then as we continue to grow in our businesses we slowly tweak and you know and change it out so right now on my um, on my iPad here I have opened the data priority pyramid and this is actually part of a guide that we're working on here at REI SIFT it might already be out depending on when you're watching this video um, but essentially it's the ultimate sales and marketing guide for real estate um, sales and marketing teams and uh, this is one of the kind of the, uh, the resources that is inside of that free guide where we break down literally from start to finish on how to build a real estate marketing sales company. Um, and, um, and in this, you can see that we have three different um, uh, sections here, tier one, tier two, and tier three. Uh, and of course, it's shaped like a pyramid. Uh, we're going to start at tier one here because it's the easiest for us to um, kind of break, break down in, in the most relatable. All right, so what does tier one data consist of? Well, typically what it's gonna be is it's gonna be uh, number one, vexation based, okay? So we're talking about vexations. What is a vexation? Um, and my handwriting is terrible, so just uh, rely on both your eyes and your ears to uh, properly figure out what I'm, what I'm writing. Um, a vexation is something that is, that is a problem that, that's keeping someone awake at night, right? So Google the definition of vexation if you really need to. Um, but a good example is right now, um, always self look, look inward when we're trying to understand vexation. So right now, just close your eyes and just kind of lay back and just think, you know, what are the problems that I have right now that keep me awake at night? When I'm going to bed, what is the things that I'm trying to push out of my brain that's, so it's not keeping me awake um, as I'm trying to fall asleep? Um, for you, it might be the amount of leads that you're generating. It might be the fact that you're not generating motivated leads. It might be the fact that you're not closing any of your leads. What is the problems that you have? These problems, if you notice, will be the same types of things that you see real estate gurus pushing on you know, their Facebook ads, like make $10,000 in your first month of real estate. And you're like, oh my gosh, I need $10,000 right now to pay my bills. And so you fall for it, right? Um, and so it is marketing at the end of the day. And so vexation base is one of the big things. The second thing that it's gonna contain is, is some sort of base list. Um, and we'll talk about base list when we talk about tier three. But essentially, um, a base list is um, it is it is uh, it's not a vexation base. It's just like an address. So like, hey, uh, one two three Main Street, um, and it was sold ten years ago. Okay, so it's just a base list. It could have equity. It could have something else. At the end of the day, what I really kind of care about is that there's you know two or more lists here that's going on. But does it need to be? Not necessarily. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, anomalies or some of the ways that you can evolve this over time. For now, 
we're going to focus on the fact that hey, it's it's got this um, you know this base list as well as a vexation. So um, it might be high equity and probate. Let's just say, okay. So you have those two things going for for it. Now, the third thing that a, a tier one data needs is some form of other like. Um, identifier, right? Like a, I call it like a plus one focus or something like that. Um, and what that means is, that does not spell focus. What that means is that it is something that, um, that you're specifically interested in. You know, this could be a zip code. Um, it could be a um, particular, you know, property type. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, what it is. It's just a narrowed in focus. And so what we have here is we have three different um, conditions that we're trying to make sure the data meets. And so let's just give a quick example. If you have 10,000 records that you pulled from the county, okay, um, this data might be just straight addresses, okay? There's nothing else going on with it. It's just straight addresses. And then you upload, um, you're like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to narrow down this 10,000 into tier one. So how can we do that? Well, if you upload it to REI if we can say, cool, well, I uploaded it to REI if and it said that there's 1,000 vacant properties. Okay, so that's a vexation. It's um, an address, so that's base data. So we got base data there. Um, and um, also, when I uploaded to REI if I noticed that there's some of these that are out-of-state homeowners, uh, so out-of-state OOS, um, and so, boom, there's my, there's my plus one focus because I want to focus on the properties that are out-of-state homeowners that have vacant properties inside that specific location. All right, so that qualifies for tier one. Now, how would I have known that those uh, records existed if I had not um, first gained the insight on it, right? Most people would just skip trace these 10,000 and then call through the whole list, but the problem is you don't know if you're going to reach those 1,000. You really want to focus on those 1,000 and then the other 9,000, right, we don't care as much about. We can throw those into another strategy. And we're going to talk about that again here in just a second. All right, so that's tier one. So let's make through the rest of the tiers and explain what each of these tiers are. And then we'll kind of move into the types of strategies that we're going to use um, on there. So on the left-hand side here, we're talking strategy. And this is data type. Okay, the other thing that tier one data is leads. You're, if you're generating leads in your business right now, after uh, you generate a lead, it becomes tier one data. It becomes something of heightened focus. So tier one data is the stuff that you are focusing pretty heavily on. Okay, and, and we'll talk about the strategies on how to focus on that uh, again in just a minute. So tier two data. Tier two data is... Um, what a lot of people would usually kind of consider stacked, okay? And so this is anything that has a vexation or really two identifiers. Um, so it um, has a vexation, um, another identifier, um, and, and that's it, right? So really you're just looking for two primary things, okay? It's on... Um, it, it's, 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 it's becoming a larger data set because you don't have that extra focus, right? Um, so if I use the analogy of the 10,000 records up here, all right, these 10,000 records without any insight automatically are tier three. If I say, okay, well, I know that a thousand of them are vacant, that thousand is tier, tier two, but I'm like, okay, I know that these thousand are vacant and, and, and 500 of them are out-of-state homeowners that are vacant, that becomes tier one. And you, so you can see how we go from 10,000 to 1,000 to 500. And so we want to take and we want to market uh, in accordance to the priority uh, in a top-down fashion to those 10,000 records, right? And so, um, and again, we'll break that down. So, um, so that's that, right? Some people, again, they consider that stack data. Now, Again, just like the analogy I just showed you, you could upload the 1,000, right, and market to these tier two records um, in whatever fashion you are, be it direct mail, cold calling, SMS, whatever. Um, and these 500 or so, you know, of your tier one data, they're in here, right? But the, the strategy that you're using for your tier two data versus your tier one data have different levels of clarity after the marketing effort is finished. And so, 
I don't want to just, I'm still going to throw those thousand in there and maybe I reach them, but I'm going to still focus on the 500 outside of that marketing effort so that I can try to get that, you know, did I reach that individual or did I not? And lastly, tier three data is, is straight up just base data, right? This is literally just parcel addresses, right? So parcel addresses. Right, and, and the big thing when you're pulling tier three data is that um, a lot of people would just pull like high equity data, you know, maybe it's high equity, unknown equity, low equity, or some form of like equity. Right now, it's not the time to be doing that. You don't want to be doing any equity based lists right now because it's just so inaccurate. You know, data providers can't keep up to date with the market change, and I wouldn't rely on that. What I would do is I would pull that base data. Um, and I would just have it set as a form of uh, last sold date, right? So I would just make sure that I have my last sold date. I don't care if it was sold a month ago or five years ago, right? I'm just going to pull it all down um, and I'm going to filter by the data that was sold a certain period of time ago. Like I want it to be at least sold five years ago or, 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 or older, right? Um, or maybe I needed to have sold, you know, three years ago because stuff that was sold three years ago, um, you know, compared to now, maybe if I'm focusing on foreclosures, I know if they were sold two years ago uh, and I have a foreclosure list, then I know that it's probably been, it was probably at the height of the market. So maybe I don't want to market to foreclosures that were sold in, you know, two years ago because, well, I'm probably not going to be able to do anything with the deal, right? But hey, if it's in foreclosure and it was sold seven years ago, then I know that the interest rates and the, 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 Price of the property back then is probably low enough to where I can actually make a deal happen, right? And so we can use this the the, the intelligence um, that we can kind of culminate together through the data in order to create more efficient marketing campaigns. You know, between tier one, tier two, and tier three, right? Uh, another example might be like, okay, this is just foreclosure data, right? And then this is foreclosure that's on other more than one list. Um, plus vacant, maybe, right? But this is foreclosures, which I'm an acronym for FC, uh, vacant, and uh, it's in my favorite zip code, right? And so you can see, it doesn't really matter if it's like a whole county or if it's one type of list, the data priority pyramid fits either way because we can say, okay, this is all foreclosure. That's my base data. Base data doesn't have to just be, you know, parcel addresses, it can just be Add, you know, just that a singular data set like foreclosures, and then tier two is uh, foreclosure. So I have a vexation plus an identifier. Okay, cool. So that's foreclosure plus vacant. That's tier two, uh, and then free and clear, vacant, and in my favorite zip code qualifies as tier one. And so I want to make sure that I'm always first to market uh, marketing with tier one data. Always, anytime that it pops up, I want to be the first one that that communicates with that seller. Um, Okay, so let's talk now about the types of strategies that we would utilize uh, with this, um, with these different types of uh, tiers. So, if you're working with tier one data, you want to be doing what's called niche sequential. I'm just going to abbreviate sequential with SEQ. Um, you don't want to put this through a bulk dialer. It's usually very small data sets, but you want to be doing a niche sequential marketing strategy, um, which essentially means that you're going to call. Uh, click to call those records um, with your leads. Obviously, you're already doing this. You're already just manually calling your leads, um, leaving a voicemail, sending a text message. You're going to do that for a few days in a row and then move them to another strategy, right? You're going to put that through some sort of um, process. Um, with your prospects, you're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to call the phone numbers that are inside of that record, right? Phone number one, phone number two, phone number three, call, voicemail, Call, they pick up wrong number, tag it as wrong number or status wrong number, and so on, right? So you're gonna work that record. If you don't reach anybody in that home, right, then cool. We're gonna click on uh, um, the, the tasks and add a follow up task for tomorrow. We're gonna click on the next record. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna aim to try to get done a certain amount of records every single day um, in niche. And ideally, depending on your niche, if that data comes out today, let's say it's 15 records today, cool. I'm gonna pull those 15 records. I'm gonna call all 15, I'm gonna leave voicemails if I get them, I'm gonna send direct mail, and then I'm gonna do the next day, and I'm gonna to continue to repeat that process. And, and see, the big thing about that, the powerful thing about that is that if I'm the company, let's say I'm a company that I pull foreclosure data every quarter, okay, but you pull it every month, 
you're going to have an advantage over me, right? Because you're going to market to those people before I do because you, because my data is old, older than your data. Now, let's say I market for a month, but you pull it weekly. Okay, well, again, you're pulling weekly. You're getting ahead of it before me, right? First to market. Um, let's say I pull it weekly, but now you pull it daily, right? The daily is always going to win. The weekly is going to win before everything else. And so, it, again, just like the data priority pyramid, the, the frequency of which you can get the data and market, the better. The sooner that they understand that you, know, you um, have a problem uh, or they have a problem that you can solve, um, you know, the better before anybody else. It's no different They're like if you seen one guru's ad before the other guru's ad, you don't know this other guru exists, so you're going to think that this is the expert you need to follow. And so you're going to go down that path of that guru, right? Um, instead, you should be going down the SIFT path uh, um, and, and, and following the data priority pyramid. But um, and just kind of kind of help you understand why first to market is so important. And, and what it happens is, is that when it comes to that analogy I did with like foreclosures in tier three, two, and one, that becomes irrelevant because you're being first to market. So it never makes it past tier one because you're first to market. As soon as it comes out, you're marketing to it. So it never becomes two, two or three. Okay. Um, because there's not enough data because you're hitting the data as soon as it's fresh. And because you're hitting it as soon as it's fresh, it's not as much. So it's easier to manage and maintain compared to pulling a whole, you know, years worth of high equity, you know, or, or county level data. Now we start kind of, uh, getting a lot of stuff we got to manage, which is fine. We just got to do it the right way. So let's talk about tier two, tier two. Um, we can do niche sequential, but we can also do bulk sequential here. And it really just depends on the amount of data that's sitting under tier two. Um, if there's only a thousand records under tier two, then I'm not going to throw that in a bulk dialer and work it. I'm going to do that via niche sequential. Now, if there's 10,000 there, then okay, well, the question would be, are they truly tier two or is there some of those 10,000 are tier one? Um, in which case, well, I'll decide if I want to do bulk or sequential there. Okay. Bulk marketing uh, or bulk sequential is essentially where, you know, I do a cold call campaign. Maybe I call through this at least five times and then I move it to an SMS campaign with an SMS provider and I do that at least, you know, five times and then I move it to direct mail and I do that at least five times and any of the return mail, right, acronym is RM, maybe then I do niche sequential to those, right? Um, maybe I do niche sequential to the return mail, in which case if we got return mail and I didn't reach them via all the phones and I'm probably going to have to research the siblings and stuff and we're not going to get into that now, but... Um, you know, there is a flow and a path that you need to follow. Um, tier three should only be bulk, bulk sequential. Okay. So you're only going to do bulk sequential marketing to tier three data because typically you're talking volume here. Okay. You're talking, you know, 10, 20, 30, a hundred, a million, you know, uh, you know, rec records, you know, so 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, hundred thousand, a million records. Um, and so you're going to, you're going to just throw that inside of a, um, bulk dialer. So let's go ahead and just give an example here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of scroll down here and we're going to say that you have a county that has a uh, hundred thousand population. Okay. hundred thousand population. And, um, you know that in your county, some of the problems that need to be solved is probate and tax delinquency. Right now inside your life, you don't really know too much about probate and tax delinquency. You don't have the viability in it. I don't quite understand it. So therefore, I'm not going to really dig too much into it. But I do know that I can access, you know, I'm like, well, I'm just going to start calling homeowners. Okay, that's fine. So you pull a list, but you pull the list based off of your budget. You can only afford $1,000 um, of data, right? And so that's going to equate to be roughly... Let me just pull it up here. You're roughly 30,000 records. Okay, so you got 30,000 records, right? But then you're like, oh, shoot, I got to skip trace all those, which is 15 cents a piece. So that means at 30,000 records, that's $4,500. It's a lot of money, right? Do I need to do that to get started? Right? Absolutely not. Because out of the, I, what I could do instead is I could say, okay, let me get REI sift. 
I'm gonna upload those 30,000 to REI SIF, and then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna prioritize my 30,000 because I don't know any of this stuff yet. Because some of these problems, the probate and the tax delinquency, they could, they're, they're somewhere in the 30,000. I just don't have the data to help tell me that that's the problem before I call them and they tell me that that's their problem. You see, intelligence itself is the form of having information that you can react on, okay? Um, there's no form of intelligence where we, we, we do an action without first knowing uh, you know, the circumstances, all right? Um, th that's just guessing. I guess maybe human intelligence has some, you know, it's kind of like that, but nevertheless, we're not gonna get into it. Um, so 30,000 uh, and then that's gonna cost $4,500, but I upload to REI SIF and I'm like, okay, cool. I got these 30,000 records, but now inside of REI SIF, I see that there's, you know, 10,000 that are out of state homeowners. Um, and out of those 10,000, uh, there's um, 1,000 that are vacant. Okay, so what do I do here? Well, I wanna keep it cheaper. So I'm gonna skip trace these 1,000, and these are tier one, and I'm gonna do niche, I'm gonna do niche uh, sequential marketing. Okay, now, based off my budget and my time, because if I'm just solo, then I shouldn't get into the other stuff. I should just do this. I'm gonna track my KPIs and the results and everything else, but let's just say I do have a cold caller um, and I need them to start cold calling. I'm spending, you know, $750 a month on a cold caller. I have call tools, right? And so I'm going to take that. I'm going to put this, this, this data here is, um, it fits whatever the base list is. And then it's also out of state. Uh, it's got two identifiers. Um, so it would fit as tier two. Um, so it can have a vexation, but it can also have two identifiers here. Um, and so this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skip trace it. And I'm going to, I'm going to just, this is tier two data which means that, what should I do there? Okay, well, I can do bulk or sequential. I wanna kinda just generate some volume leads. I'm not too worried about them being super motivated. Um, you know, I just, I'm just trying to get some traction, people I can make offers to. So I'm gonna throw this in bulk. Okay, and so the bulk strategy is gonna you know, take this and it's gonna you know, be attempt one. Cold call A01. I'm gonna generate leads from that. There's gonna be a market response. I'm gonna update REI SIFT. And then there's gonna be cold call attempt two. And then uh, again, there's gonna be market response. I'm gonna update REI SIFT, right, with leads or with wrong phone numbers. And there's gonna be cold call attempt two and so on, so on and so on. And after I go through at least five times, you know, five attempts out of those 10,000, you know, maybe I reached 2,000. Right? Well, crap, there's still 8,000 people that I haven't reached. Okay, and the actual number here is between 2 to 5%. Okay, now there's 8,000. Okay, well, I can skip trace in a second location at this point, or I can take this and I can uh, now start SMS attempt one. Remember, remember, what I said before is that we don't want to assume the way that these people want to be heard. Uh, and so, therefore, uh, now I want to do SMS, I'm gonna, and there's going to be market response. You know, oh, you got the wrong number, or this, that, or the other, and then I'm gonna do attempt two, and then attempt three, and so on, and after I do SMS, I'm gonna do the next strategy. And, and, and this bulk sequential strategy, strategies I'm talking about, um, these are all educated inside of our data to dollars challenge. Um, so I'm not gonna dig too much into them right now. I, what I want you guys to understand is the prioritization of the data um, and the marketing strategy that will go with it. I'm not gonna necessarily dig into each of those strategies, okay? Um, and so now, this one from 30 to 10 to one, which means that, you know, there's 20,000 or, uh, yeah, 20,000 that's left over here. Um, and uh, so what I can do is as this, you know, 10,000, these 1,000 get depleted, then I tap into the rest of this, right? Uh, I would have already closed some deals from here and maybe I decide, okay, cool, well, I have the budgetary constraints. Let's go ahead and skip trace the rest of it. And because I know what I'm doing, I know how to properly sequential market to the uh, tier two data through bulk strategy, it's the same strategy that I would use with um, you know, tier three data. So I'm just gonna throw that into the same kind of strategy, right? Um, or I'm gonna pull more data. Or maybe at this point I start saying, okay, well now I wanna pull in tax delinquency. I wanna be first to mark with that. I'm gonna continue working this big data, but I'm gonna pull in tax delinquent data and uh, I wanna be first to market. So I pull it on on a daily. I know I wanna do it daily. I might get roughly 15 rec records a day. 
Uh, I'm gonna call through them. I'm gonna leave a voicemail on the numbers if I get a voicemail. If I don't reach anybody after three attempts, then I'm gonna send direct mail. Uh, and I'm gonna do that every day consistently. Okay, and so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna really track my market response there. I'm gonna be able to figure out who I'm reaching and who I'm not. Um, and, it, and it's a really a beautiful thing, right? And so um, some of the biggest things to really take from the data priority pyramid is that um, you don't need to spend all your money right away. Um, you can prioritize where you should spend your money based off of the, um, the, prior, the, the, the data itself. Um, and the way that we market to niche uh, prospects is the same way that we market to leads. And it's really important that we have a process in place for that. And then um, when it comes to bigger data sets, it's totally okay to do bulk marketing, cold calling, SMS, as long as we track in the market response, update our phone numbers, update the, you know, the wrong, the dead numbers, and, and we track our KPIs with that. And REI SIF helps us achieve all of this, right? From the flow on where we're moving, what, when, and um, what is all the wrong phone numbers. So I don't, re you know, if I'm doing bulk dialing and then I move it to SMS, so I don't re uh, text message the wrong numbers that I already spent time and money on my cold calling, you know, uh, marketing. Now, the last thing that I want to cover here is how data flows downhill. How does it flow from um, with the strategy down from tier one to uh, three to tier one? So the one thing we didn't mention was if you have a bucket of records, right? And these are these are your let's say these are your let's say this is tier two stuff, right? We got ten thousand tier two. All right, and these we in this strategy we're doing bulk cold calling. Okay, if we market to these records for you know let's say it's five attempts, right? Um, we want to move this then down into a niche strategy. Um, anybody we don't reach, let's say out of those we end up after the whole bulk um, and then the SMS uh, and then so on. We don't reach anybody. We want to make sure that. We finish the cycle. What I mean by finishing the cycle is that you know the the rest of the people that are in that segmentation need to be a confirmed owner or not owner, right? That's why I market. I market to try to figure out are you the owner to the property? When they answer the phone, I'm saying, hey Sally, because I want to know is it Sally or is it not Sally? And, you know, I don't ask, hey Sally, are you interested in selling your home at 123 Main Street? Because it gives them a scapegoat, right? It, gets, it lets them say, oh no, you don't cut Sally because they don't want to sell. But now I don't know if it's Sally or not Sally, so at the end of the day, I need to know if it's Sally or not, because I or, or Jimmy, right? Because I need to know that that's the correct phone number so I can follow up with that phone number because once I get the phone number, I don't have to mark it no more, okay? Because let's say, for example, you know that you have, I've been liking this example lately, 1,500 um, you know, properties that you absolutely know that you want to buy. Like, you, okay, I know this is 1,500. This is one community. I want to own every house in that community, right? If I told you, cool, well, to get all those, we're just gonna market to these, we're gonna cold call, we're gonna SMS, uh, and then we're gonna send direct mail to try and get some inbound calls. And after one year, you collected all 1,500 correct numbers, right, to, to, to that community. So you had all 1,500. You wouldn't have to do prospecting next year. You're just doing lead follow-up at that point, right? You're doing not interested follow-up. You already have, so your marketing cost goes down every year because you're getting more correct numbers every year, right? And so that's the idea. We have some users at REI SIP that have, um, you know, tens of thousands of correct phone numbers, right? Uh, they're just collecting correct phone numbers because that's what gives them the advantage in their market, right? From a data per perspective, from a priority perspective, they prioritize following up with all those correct phone numbers. All right, so make sure that you utilize the data priority pyramid to prioritize the prospects that you're reaching out to so that you can get more correct numbers of prospects uh, that you don't have to market to tomorrow. Uh, instead, uh, you have the correct phone numbers already so that you can market to them today, right? So you can just continue to do the follow-up of the not interested. It's much like the users that I talked about uh, just before. Um, and on top of that, uh, you wanna be able to have that sequential flow, right? You wanna be able to map out that flow on who do I, 
who have I skipped trades? Who have I not skipped trades? Who, who do I need to call first? Who, who's my follow-ups? And that's something that REI SIF as a platform does really, 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 really well. In fact, we actually have a training called the Data to Dollars Training, uh, which you can do where we have a live uh, class every single day teaching you how to property sales and marketing management, how to do the process uh, and make sure that you're not losing any gaps in your business, making sure that every lead has a task, uh, every lead that's hot has an offer, uh, what does the acquisitions team need to do versus not need to do today, um, making sure that you're, you're keeping control of your operations because at the end of the day that's what really is important. Uh, intellectual property, IP, those correct numbers, the wrong numbers, uh, you know, the, the data uh, marketing update, that market response, updating that is what creates intellectual property for your real estate company. Um, and then operations is what allows you to use that intellectual property um, and actually build intelligence, right? You use the intelligence off that intellectual property in order for you to have the advantage of your competition. Um, and REI SIF is a great tool to do that. Check out the Data to Dollars Challenge. Um, you can check it out above or head to our website at reisif.io, click on learn, you can check it out there. Other than that, enjoy the free resource, enjoy the free education, and we'll see you guys in the next free resource that I'm sure you'll likely get from us via our YouTube channel, uh, another Facebook ad, uh, or our REISIF Mastermind community on Facebook. We'll talk to you guys later, bye-bye, thanks.